There's a mind-blowing puzzle written by Samuel Lloyd in 1914 called The Nine Dots. Lloyd liked making puzzles to represent the way that we approach problem solving. In this puzzle, he draws nine dots and proposes to connect them with only four straight lines, never lifting the pencil from the paper. Now, let's take a few seconds to think about it. Like most people, you probably feel limited by the short number of lines you can use, or by the few constraints you are given. The truth is though, you're probably concentrating too much on the dots that you see a barrier closing the space around them. And yet, the problem is easily resolved by extending the lines outside of the confines of your imaginary box. This is likely the same mistake we encounter when we deal with fragile states. We know that fragile states are a global emergency. Out of the world's 7 billion people, about 26% live in fragile states. These people represent one-third of all people surviving on less than $1.25 per day, 75% of the world's refugees, half of the world's children who die before the age of five. This is, perhaps, the greatest challenge of the global aid community. Fragile states are generally recognized as states which don't have the capacity to perform basic functions. Citizens don't feel represented. Institutions struggle to maintain the legitimacy. People become vulnerable to violence and conflict, and everything collapses in a general decay of security and living conditions. Huge efforts and large amount of resources have been invested in supporting the institutions of these countries to restore their governance and to rebuild their states. However, very often these attempts have led to big failures. Of course, one of the reasons is that fragile states are tough places to work. Issues are multiple and of multiple natures. We have difficulties in assessing context. Social and political situations are constantly changing. And what are the actual drivers of conflict and constraints to prosperity? This remains largely unknown. How can we develop systems for learning and for scaling what works in such uncertain environments? What are the processes that should inspire our programs? What's the right architecture to rebuild a fragile state? The answer perhaps can be found if we look beyond the stability of institutions, extending our observation to the space around them. All in all, when you want to rebuild a house, you must start with the foundations. It's only by tinkering at a small scale, starting from the base, that we can reconstruct from the ruins a better and more stable building. And citizens are the foundation of every society. At the beginning of his social farm, man was born naked into the world, with the sole need of shaping natural resources to satisfy his wants and advancing his living conditions. Men turn natural resources into private property and find that, through the process of voluntary exchange and mutual cooperation, the productivity and the living standards of all participants can increase enormously. So men step forward along the social path. Together they agree about their values, turn their collective needs into duties, and give themselves norms in order to address problems in harmonious and peaceful cooperation rather than fighting over them. The failure of fragile space goes beyond the limited capacity of state institutions. In fragile space, there is a problem of legitimacy of state institutions. And we know that the legitimacy of state institutions is strongly affected by the lack of dialogue and cooperation with citizens and among citizens themselves. And yet, when institutions collapse, communities still hold values and norms to cooperate as a group. They rally harder and reinforce cohesion to address problems, and they oppose strongly to an external threat. Communities are the lowest social unit and the most direct expression of individuals. They hold social capital that can largely affect the development path of a nation. However, state failure often represents a real trauma for communities and an obstacle to reactivating the dialogue with other communities and emerging institutions. For many years, the Danish Refugee Council has been working with hundreds of communities affected by conflict to restore dialogue and cooperation through the CDRD the Community Driven Recovery and Development Project. In CDRD, we support communities to raise common problems, to identify priorities, and to administer resources for building common solutions. Communities reorganize themselves in a new model of governance, integrated within their own set of norms, but anchored to dialogue and interaction amongst all community members. People have the chance to directly experience problem-solving dynamics, to debate their ideas and to critically reconsider, along with their values, the benefit of collaborating in larger and more refined social structures. When the process is successful, CDRD supports communities to scale up their experience of governance and to address more complex issues in a larger cooperation with other communities and emerging institutions. Over years of implementation, we have learned mistakes and scale what work to design a framework able to build dialogue between citizens and state institutions. But for us, CDRD is also an opportunity to 
set up a laboratory of interaction with citizens, where together we can continue to learn and develop new ideas, new and more integrated ways to connect the dots and to building every time, starting from the bottom, a unique and successful story.